So I started Draw originally to make some friends. I wanted to kind of get involved with the creative community in Brighton and I wasn't quite sure where to start. And I was sharing a studio with some graphic designers and thought it'd be really nice to start a life class and to meet people there. We wanted to create a space where people could come together and creatively collaborate. Um, we wanted to create an environment in which people could learn to draw, of course. And then also we wanted to create an environment in which people could come and work and um, a sort of series of life classes that would generate creative work that would actually feed into the, the practice of those models that were modeling and eventually tutors as well that were coming to teach at Draw. So it was kind of all built on, on those three principles at first. So my name's Jake Spicer and I'm the head tutor of Draw. Uh, I also founded Draw, so founding tutor. I started advertising it in 2008 to open classes in January 2009 and um, it was after the financial crash and I think there was a, a real lack of arts funding, I think a lot of anxiety in arts organisations in, in Brighton. I just thought well it'd be really nice to create something um, that's very sort of led by need and, and sort of really grassroots focused. But, um, but I, I didn't have any money to kind of set it up with, so we got a little bit of um, funding in kind for a from a local um, sketchbook maker, C. Whites, and uh, the models that were starting to kind of get involved with the classes, they would help set up, and um, we had a very small space, we could only fit about six people in at a time. And, and the real catalyst for growth was um, we had this uh, themed event that we got commissioned to do for White Night, the Nuit Blanche that used to happen in Brighton. It's like a, an all-night arts festival. And we got asked to go and do an all-night life drawing session at the Comedia, um, sort of nightclub type venue. And uh, we thought, oh, we might get 40, 50 people, you know, we'll get a really buzzing session, we'll, we'll have some sort of themed poses and we'll have um, music playing and it'll be really fun and it might encourage some more people into drawing and we had 750 people turn up. I mean it was it was rammed, we could only fit 50 people in at a time so there was this queue going down the road. Um, we ran until 4am in the morning and we had to set, set up all of these little impromptu drawing sessions in the queue just to kind of keep people happy. And, um, and then off the back of that our little six person life club was just getting sold out every single week and we thought we need to expand this and some of the models that have been involved in that um, sort of first themed session were like yeah okay let's let's get a studio you know let's get a shared dedicated studio um, where we can just run life classes and and so that's when I think Draw as an organisation was was born which was a, a sort of a little while after we'd sort of set it up just as a little life class and then it's, it's kind of just it's grown like that and I think grown organically in response to need. You know, when people want to um, do more tutored drawing, then we find tutors that, that we can work with that will be part of that community and we put on what is asked for. Um, and I think, you know, I've always believed that drawing's a, a real social good. I think it doesn't do any harm to anybody. You are teaching a practical skill that I think um, people enjoy. You know, it gives people a kind of sense of value. Uh, but I think it also teaches people to, to look and to, um, to be more visually intelligent and, and visually articulate. And I think because we're bombarded with images all the time, I think the skill of being able to slow down a little bit and look more um, carefully and kind of closely at the things that are in front of you, be that, you know, an unclothed model in a life drawing studio or, you know, a building out sketching in the street or, or you know, a bunch of flowers or just putting an idea down from your head. I think it, um, it helps to, to, to build a set of skills that I think are, are kind of needed in people's lives. And, I think we've just always tried to kind of respond to that, you know, respond to that need. So um, I usually find it hard to um, draw, I get caught up in my head and um, very, very critical of my own work. So coming to a live class, coming to live drawing, it's the focus is completely away from me and onto the subject and sort of the time element of it as well. So it kind of pulls me out of my head and makes me really present and it's all about the process rather than the final result.
So I think the COVID-19 pandemic, I think it completely changed the shape of life drawing um, in a positive way. Actually, I think what it showed was just how resilient the international life drawing community is. All of us that run life drawing classes, we just had this moment of just thinking, well, all of our classes are going to shut right now. You know, that's, that's our income, that's our livelihood. Most people running life drawing classes, models, tutors, they're, they're not wealthy, they don't have backup income. I think also there was a genuine sense that we need to provide something for people. And I think the comfort that we all get from sitting down and drawing of an evening, I think it's something that we really needed at that point where everyone was suddenly locked away in their houses. People needed a creative outlet. They needed to feel like they were doing something alongside other people while still being away from other people. And so I think then technology, I think gave us the opportunity to connect together online, to be able to do um, kind of live online life classes. I was totally taken aback, to be honest, because I thought that people would want to draw from really good quality images, um, but I didn't think they'd want to kind of work from a grainy image on Zoom or something like that. But what I realised is that people want to draw together and they want the sense that there is another human being involved at the other end of the drawing. And so live Zoom-based life drawing for all its kind of graininess and you know, sort of dodgy internet connections and things like that has sort of become its own um, genre of drawing. And I think introduced something very new to the, the drawing space. It's not better or worse than drawing in um, a, a real life setting but I think it's, it's opened up new opportunities for models to travel around the world and still have life modeling work everywhere with their classes for, um, for, for online communities to form that wouldn't have existed before. And people to come together and, and sort of share creative ideas in, in all sorts of different ways. So being able to um, continue drawing online, life drawing online, it was so amazing, particularly because um, in some ways I felt quite isolated being quite a social person and being able to just join on a um, on a zoom chat and feel like I was alongside people drawing doing an activity that I love so much um, and obviously drawing a person who was technically in some ways with us as well so um, that was a real lifeline in a lot of ways during the pandemic um, being in a being a freelancer and being a creative and um, yeah, still having that community aspect to art. Um, even though I hated life drawing online, I still got to see my friends and I still had that kind of hook with people that I knew would come back to life drawing in real, real life when the time came. I think early on, when I first started to draw, before it was draw, but when it was just a life drawing class, I, I had great intentions for it to be something bigger. Um, I think the people that have been involved with that over those 13 years have shaped it and made it far more than I could have ever envisaged it would be from early on. And I think I feel very lucky to continue to kind of meet and work with all of those amazing people. I think also like, you know, when I was working at Sainsbury's, I used to write all of these ideas down on the, um, the cardboard backs of yogurt packets that we used to get in. They'd always be sort of waste and I'd have all these ideas for what a life drawing community could be. I'd write them down, I'd sort of tuck them away in my pocket to look at again later and try and sort of put into action. Uh, and I think being able to kind of um, actually just sit down, make some concrete plans, kind of build one thing on another, build organically in response to what people actually need. Um, I think that's been important as well as actually having a, a dream for something to happen.